sweet is so good to eat, yes, we have it every day. We sing this song, it will make us strong, and it makes us shout, hooray! It's good for growing babies and grown-ups too to eat. For all the family's breakfast, you can't beat cream of wheat. Cream of wheat, the great American family cereal presents Let's Pretend. Sybil, sounds like our audience out there is excited about something. You know what it is? Yes, Uncle Bill. I think they're anxious for our story today. Oh, something special today, audience? What is it? Jack and the Beanstalk! Oh, so it is. Jack and the Beanstalk. Well, let's get going. Who's going to say how we travel today? We drew lots, and I won. I suggest we travel by steamroller. And who are you, it says here? Why, I'm Betty Jane Tyler, she replied. <laughs> okay, Betty Jane, steamroller it is. Everybody ready? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Steamroller is lots of fun, isn't it, Uncle Bill? But gosh, it sure is pokey and slow. Well, if it's speed you're looking for, Sybil, better rush out and get yourself a package of enriched five-minute cream of wheat. You see, cream of wheat has food power, just what it takes to help get you off to a real flying start every morning. Yes, you're on the right track, full speed ahead, when you call for cream of wheat. So, eat a better breakfast, feel better all day, get a better start the cream of wheat way. And keep listening for our exciting cream of wheat game right after the first act of today's story, Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time in the land of enchantment, a widow and her brave young son lived in the shadow of poverty. The mother did her best, but there came a day when she could no longer hide the truth. We find her talking with her son, Jack, in the kitchen of their spotless home. You see, Jack, there isn't a penny in our house. Unless something unforeseen happens, I, I'm afraid we'll both go hungry. Mother, I had no idea it was as bad as that. I know you didn't, Jack. I wouldn't tell you now, only... Well, I don't know what else to do. Mother, we used to have money. I remember as a little fellow before my father died, we had everything we wanted. What happened to it? I suppose since you're old enough to know this present trouble, you may as well know that, too. Your father was one of the many victims of Bullibus. Bullibus? The giant who lives in the Granite Mountain? Yes. He killed your father, destroyed our home, and took every piece of gold we had. A monster. Yes, Jack, but that's past and done. The point is, what are we going to do now? Well, have you thought of anything? We have only one thing left. Bossy, the cow, we could sell her. Sell Bossy, Mother? Oh, no, I love Bossy. I know, Jack, but what else can we do? There's nothing left. Mother, I... I don't see how I can part with it. But if you say so, why, then I suppose we must. You'd better take her to the butcher, Jack, and get the best price possible. To the butcher? When must I go? I think you'd better go immediately. Putting it off only makes it more difficult. Very well, then, Mother. I guess I'd better go before I start thinking about it. Goodbye. I'm as sorry as you are, Jack. Oh, Bossy, how can I do it? Come on, Bossy, we'd better start. I can't scratch your head now, Bossy. I just can't. I know, but Mother said there's nothing else to be done. Come on, Bossy. Come on, Bossy. Come on, we're nearly there. Oh, look out there, youngster. You nearly collided with me. Excuse me, sir, I... I didn't see you. Well, how could you with your eyes so filled with tears? Yeah, what's the matter, Sonny? Why do you weep? Uh, I just can't take Bossy to the butcher, sir. <sighs> come, come now. Stop the tears. They don't become you. After all, you're a man. 
Men don't cry. You're right, sir, they don't. But you see, I just happen to have made a pet out of Bossy, and it's hard to part with her. Good day to you, sir. Come, Bossy. Here, yeah, wait a minute. You're quite a person, youngster. I like you. Now, what's your name? Jack, sir. Well, then, Jack, tell me, why do you have to take Bossy to the butcher? My mother and I must eat, sir, and we have no money. Bossy's all we have left to sell. I see. Well, uh, suppose I bought the cow from you. What then? And you wouldn't kill her for meat? No, I promise you I wouldn't. And would you be kind to her, sir, would you? I would be very kind to her. Oh, then I'll sell her to you. Oh, what can you give for us, sir? Mother said to get the best price possible. Well, uh, I have no money. Only these beans. But they're very nourishing, Jack. Beans? Uh, I'm afraid that wouldn't be a good price, sir. Why not? They're very unusual. You'll be amazed at their great power. I promise you will. Yes, but what will my mother say? When she sees how they grow, I don't think she'll mind. And just think, I'm going to give Bossy a good home. A good home. Very well, sir. Give me the beans. And I hope they'll last us a long time. <laughs> You'll soon find out what they'll do. Here they are. Goodbye, Bossy. At least you're all right. And that helps. Goodbye. Well, Jack, you've been gone a long time. Yes, Mother. Poor boy, it was a difficult thing to do, but we had to. What did the butcher pay you? I, uh, I didn't sell Bossy to the butcher. No? To whom, then? A stranger on the road who promised to be very kind to her. Oh, well, so far, so good. What did he pay you? Mother, I hope you won't be angry. Tell me quickly, Jack. What did he pay you? He gave me these beans. He gave you what? These beans. He said they had great power and were very nourishing. And you mean to say you sold the cow, our last hope for food, for a handful of beans? Well, the stranger the said they... The stranger they... said. And did he say what we would eat or, or how we live? He didn't say anything about that, did he? No, only I'm sure that he would Jack, wouldn't... how could you be so stupid? And I thought you were intelligent. I counted on your help. And you've thrown away our last hope. Just as I throw these silly beans out the window. No, don't throw them away, Mother. There'll be food for the birds and the worms. And that's more than we'll have. Now go to your room. Start learning what it means to be hungry. Perhaps by tomorrow morning you'll come to your senses and realize what you've done. But, Mother, I... I... Yes, Mother. I'm sorry. Good night. Mother, come out of here quickly. What's the matter? Look, just look what's happened. What is it? A beanstalk. Well, you threw the beans last night. Well, I can't believe my eyes. Look how tall it is. Well, I can't see the end of it. It, it reaches to the sky. Why, Jack, it's magic. Oh, the stranger said those beans had great power, but who would have dreamed that this could happen? It's wonderful, simply wonderful. Jack... What are you going to do? I'm going to climb to the very top. Who knows what I shall find? Oh, Jack, no. Oh, but I must, Mother. There's some reason for all of this, and I must find out what it is. Something tells me our luck has changed. Oh, please be careful. Oh, I'll be careful. Jack, don't fall. Oh, Mother, I can see the top of the church steeple. Oh, now I can see the next village. Hey, there's the river. Well, oh, now I can see the whole world. Come now, there must be somebody here. Hey, let me in. Go away, whoever you are. You can't come in here. But I must. Let me in. Go away, little fellow, quickly. But I'm so very tired, madam, and I'm very hungry. Can't you let me have a little bread? Who are you? How did you get here? My name is Jack. I've been climbing the beanstalk for hours. I'm dead tired and terribly hungry. I must have some food before I go back. Won't you help me? 
please. You don't know where you are, Jack. This is the top of the world. The little folk who come up here never go back. Why not? Because it's the home of Bulibus the Giant. Bulibus the Giant? That's all I wanted to know. What did you say? I, I, I said I'm too hungry to go. Please, let me have a glass of milk or a bit of bread, then I'll run. You're taking desperate chances. But if you insist, come in. Thank you. Come into the kitchen and I'll give you something. If you promise me to leave right afterwards. <laughs> yes, I promise. Oh, that milk looks good. And cake, too. Thank you. What's your name, please? My name is Katrinka. I serve the giant, Bulibus. Listen. What is it? It's the giant. Bulibus is coming. What shall I do? Which way shall I run? <laughs> no, not that way. He comes in that door. Here, quickly, hide in the oven. All right. Perhaps he'll go to sleep and then you can get out. Quickly, in the oven. Right. <laughs> Well, hello, Katrinka. Take off my seven-league boots. They're heavy. Yes, sir. What a day I've had. I tore up a whole village. Ripped wheat fields wide open. I didn't find any children, though. And I wanted a couple for my supper. That's too bad, sir. <laughs> too bad it was a cat. I, I smell a human being. Nonsense. I, I, I tell you, I do. You can't fool me. Who's been here? No one, sir. <laughs> oh, uh, here's your little hen. So it is. <laughs> and it's about time she laid some golden eggs for us. I'll put her on the table. <laughs> and there's the golden eggs, sir. Right you are. Thanks, little hen. <clears throat> Oh, I'm tired. I could sleep for a week, Katrinka. I'm thirsty, too. Uh, go out and get some fresh water from the spring. Yes, sir. Right away. Oh, oh poor rat. I wanted a couple of children for my summer. Little hen laid a golden egg, anyhow. Well, that helps, but I'm sleepy. Oh, Come on, little hen. You're going traveling with me. <laughs> What's that? What? Why, it was me, Bullibus. I, I slammed the door. I'm sorry I woke you up. I smell a human being. It, it comes from the stove. What's that oven door open for? I, I, I can't imagine, sir. What happened to my little hen? What in thunder's going on around here? Well, whatever it was. It's gone now. Time for our cream of wheat game, Uncle Bill. Why, by golly, it is, Gwen. Uh, today, audience, we're going to play our old favorite, the Guess the Rhyme game. I'm going to read three little poems... And leave it up to you to fill in the last word. Okay, here goes. A certain young fellow named Benny said cream of wheat's better than any. Its flavor is nifty. And talk about thrifty. Why, a bowlful costs less than a... <laughs> right. Both enriched five-minute and regular cream of wheat still cost you less than one cent a bowl. And in times like these, that money-saving cream of wheat economy means more than ever before. Now, how about this poem, pretenders? There was a young strongman named Jay who cheered, Cream of wheat, hip hooray! This enriched kind five minutes has enough iron in it to take care of my needs for a... Yeah! Right on the beam, audience. You bet your life. Just one big bowl full of enriched five-minute cream of wheat Gives you all the blood-building iron you need daily. Plus those other great bodybuilders, calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin B1. All right. Now here's your last chance to guess the rhyme, audience. A certain young lady from Wheeling said, Here is the taste most appealing. I just love cream of wheat. And you simply can't beat that wonderful cream of wheat. 
100% correct, pretenders. And let those rhymes remind you that for real He-Man nourishment, plus the most super delectable flavor ever invented, you just can't beat that top-notch treat. Smooth, delicious cream of wheat. It's way... It's way down in... It's plenty smooth. Thanks a lot, audience. And now back to the second act of our story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack escaped from the castle of Bullibus, the giant. Now he and his mother are once again living in comfort on the golden eggs laid by the little hen Jack took from the giant. But their troubles aren't over. One day, on returning from the neighboring village, he finds his mother in tears. Well, hello, little mother. You were right. They pay more for the golden eggs in the next village than they do in a... Oh, Jack. What's the matter, mother? What are you crying for? Oh, Jack, haven't you heard what's happened? Oh, no, what is it? The giant bullibus. I saw some houses burning and a field torn up as I was coming back. He's but... raided the village again. Overturned houses wrecked the fields, but worst of all... What, mother? He took your sweet little cousins, Mogo and Teddy, away with him. What? We'll never see them again. The beast. <laughs> mother, I'm going up the beanstalk after them. Oh, no, Jack. No, you mustn't. Well, someone must save them. But you can't fight a giant, son. Well, I can try. He can't go on terrorizing and killing people. That's what your father said and paid with his life. Well, perhaps I shall too, but I must try. Now listen to me carefully, Mother. Get me some sharp axes. What? Have them at the root of the beanstalk. I don't know when I shall return, so keep them there day and night. But what for, Jack? I have an idea that may work out. Wish me luck, Mother, for here I go up the beanstalk. Oh, Jack, I, I'm proud of you, but I'm fearful too. Say a prayer for me, little Mother, and don't worry. Goodbye. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? It's me, Katrinka Bullibus. Oh. Where you been? Out milking. Why? Did you come in a little while ago? No, sir. It's funny. Thought I heard you. Didn't you open and close the oven door? Why, no. Oh, you must have dreamed it, sir. Did you want me to do something? No. Yeah. Uh, bring out those two children I brought up yesterday. You're not going Never to... Never mind what I'm going to do. You do as you're told. Bring them out. Yes, sir. Come out, children. What are you Please going to do? <laughs> Look at them, shaking like jelly. Oh, sir, have pity on us. What for? <laughs> oh, please let Margo go. Do what you will to me, but don't hurt my sister. Oh, please don't hurt my brother, Teddy. Uh, Bullibus, uh, don't you think they're too thin? Well, they are a little. Why not wait a week and, and I'll fatten them up for you? Well, that's an idea. Oh, you get to work on them, Katrinka. Fill them up on milk and stuff. Yes, Bullibus. Uh, now, go down to the cellar and get my money back. Yes, sir. Oh, no, never mind. You go in the other room and get my talking music box. It hasn't talked to me for a long while. I'll bring it right into you, sir. I'll get the money bags myself. Listen, Margo, who calls me? Take it easy, it's I, Jack. Jack! Quiet, Margo, they'll hear us. Where are you, Jack? Over here in the oven. I'm going to save you. Oh, Jack. Good old Jack. Listen, Katrinka didn't lock your cage. Soon the giant will go to sleep and we'll make a run for it. But be careful, we'll have to work fast once we start. Shh, here he comes back from the cellar. These money bags are heavy. <laughs> Here's your talking music box, sir. Ah, put it down here. Well, little music box. Yes, master. How about a tune for me? Your will is mine, master. <laughs> Very nice tune. <laughs> Not everybody has a music box that speaks. Are the most money in the world? <clears throat> oh, oh. Uh, Katrinka, go out to the cave and...
bring me a jug of cider? Yes, Bullivant. Oh. Shall I play again, Master? No. Oh, I guess I'm too sleepy. Oh, all the money. Music box that talks. And two nice children later on. Not bad, Bullivant. Not Oh. Careful now, Teddy. Come quickly. Margo, make for that door. Shh, Teddy, take as many of my father's money bags as you can. I'll take the rest. Margo, here, take the music box. Now run. Run for your life. Master, help. They're taking me away. Wake up, Master. Run, Margo, run for your life. Master. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, what's the matter? The music box is gone. My money's gone. Hey, the children are gone. Why, doggone it, everything's gone. I'll get them. I'll get them. Where are they? Where are they? Here he comes. Make for the beanstalk. Hurry, Ted. Come on, Teddy. Hurry up, Ted. I'll get you. I'll get you. You'll have to run faster than that, you pig. No, don't you call me a pig, you pig. I'll get you. How's the running, Bullivis? Mark of the beanstalk. There it is. Jump quickly. That's the girl. Come on, Bullivis. Hurry, Jack. Right behind you. And so am I. Well, that's fine. Come on, Bullivis. The climbing down is easy. Why don't you catch us? Don't you worry. I will. Why, Mark? It won't hurt you. Slide. I'll help you. Come on, Jack. Teddy, grab an axe and start chopping the minutes around the ground. Right. I'll help, too. What's the matter, Bullivis? Your feet tangled up. One more step and you're mine. Oh, you think so? You want to bet some money on it? Uh, Stop it. Hurry, Teddy. Come on, Bullivis. I'm coming. Yeah, so's Christmas. Let me have that axe, Teddy. Now, Bullivis, get ready for the big fall. For the beanstalk is breaking off at the root. It's starting to fall. Out the way, Michael. Oh, oh, oh. Look out, she's ready. Oh! And there you are, you big brute. Jack. Jack, what's happened? He saved us. Jack saved our lives. Oh. The giant fell in the beanstalk on top of him. Here's the money he stole from his mother. Oh. There's the music box for good measure. And there on the ground is Bullivis. He's dead as a doornail, and he'll never hurt anybody again. I'm very proud of you, Jack. My hat's off to you, Jack, the bravest boy in the whole world. Now, before we introduce today's cast and tell you about next week's exciting story, listen to this, audience. Nyla Mack and the entire Let's Pretend cast have made recordings of Jack and the Beanstalk, just the way you heard it this morning. You'll find these record albums at your favorite music dealers or department store. All right, now I want you pretenders to answer this question for me. What's the treat with a tempting flavor that Mother calls a real time saver? You bet. It cooks to full digestibility, even for babies, in just five minutes of boiling. Yes, sir, Mom goes for that speed, and you go for that wonderfully delicious flavor. Ask your grocer today for enriched five-minute or regular cream of wheat. Try it tomorrow, and you'll agree that... For all the family breakfast, you can't beat cream of wheat. The pretenders for today were... Gwen Davies. Jack. Jack Grimes. His mother. Miriam Wolf. The stranger who bought the cow. Alfred Alley. Katrinka. Patricia Ryan. Margot. Betty Jane Tyler. Teddy. David Anderson. Bullibus the Giant. Arthur Anderson. Voice of Music Box. Sybil Trent. Original music composed and conducted by Maurice Brown. These stories are dramatized and directed by Nyla Mack. Now, if you live in or near New York and you'd like to see a broadcast of Let's Pretend, drop a postcard to Cream of Wheat, CBS, New York, for your free tickets. And next Saturday, be sure to join us when Cream of Wheat will take you on another trip to the land of Let's Pretend to hear the cat's whiskers of fairy stories in the favorite dramatization of Puss in Boots. This is Bill Adams saying, remember to eat cream of wheat, the great American family cereal. This is CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System.